Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Coral Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with a launch to get Kerbals back from our Lunar Mir station. This is a Saturn V rocket as you can see, and it's got an Orion capsule with a service module on top in order to bring the Kerbals back. So, a little bit OP, but we have margin. We actually failed this sort of mission in the previous video because we accidentally decoupled the service module from the Orion capsule, leaving it sort of dead in the water. So we're trying it again, but in doing this I've sort of forgotten about the fact that we have R3 King and Katak sitting on the surface of Titan and they really need to get their business done, so I neglected that a little bit, but it's alright. Uh, Berafel, who is on the Lunar Mirror Station, specified that he really, really wanted to be alone. So we're getting all the other Kerbals off so that Berafel can be alone on Lunar Mirror. Uh, it's probably safer that way. So there's the Orion capsule, and we separated off the S2 stage, and we have a different engine on the S4B stage, and that's because I fully expected to use more than three ignitions, the number that would be available on the J2, because the Orion capsule and service module are very light for the rocket, and we wanted to use this stage for some of the other burns around the moon. So I put one of the Surestrut engines, a Hydrolox engine, and this one gets uh, slightly more thrust than the normal J2, and I think it has some throttling, because I think it tops out at 1,700-ish kilonewtons. So anyway, it is doing multiple burns around the moon, as you can see. And this is actually the second one around the moon, so normally the J2 would be out of ignitions here. But uh, I think we did an extra burn somewhere around. Anyway, so this is the Orion and its service module heading over to Mir which is in a polar orbit around the moon. So it's a little bit awkward to get to, and the burn that we skipped was uh, inclination change burn at high altitude above the moon. So anyway, we have docked, and we will grab our Kerbals eventually, but first I remember about the mission on Titan. So here's, here's a whole lot of comp uh, complicated business. But first we'll get Arthur and Katak to plant a flag and pose and everything. So here's Arthur coming down, the one who commissioned this particular mission. And uh, I want you to note that the atmospheric pressure is being read at 0.6 atmospheres there in the little information box for Titan. That is wrong. Titan actually has an atmosphere of 1.45 atmospheres. But keep that in mind. Also keep in mind the atmospheric height of 600 kilometers. So it's a very thick atmosphere. But anyway, so the in-game menu says 0.6. I know it's closer to 1.5. And anyway, we'll get to that in a moment. Here are Arthur and Katak. Uh, Katak is Arthur's girlfriend. Or perhaps I should now say fiancé. I don't remember where they were at when we recorded this. This would be a heck of a honeymoon, though. Anyway, uh, so there they are, and then getting back in. Very, very slowly, but uh, to their credit, they did not fall flat on their face in the gravity of Titan, which is only 0.13 g, so less than that of the moon. So we line up with our ship orbiting, and of course the ship has to orbit above 600 kilometers, so it's pretty high up there. And then we try and launch. Now this is one of the engines from the Proton rocket, the second stage engine, the RD0210, and I chose it because it had hypergolic fuels but had enough thrust to lift this off. But you'll note the current thrust is very, very low. It's supposed to be more like 400 kilonewtons, it's only 130. Uh, now, the thick atmosphere would knock it down a bit, but it shouldn't be that much. It's only an uh, atmosphere of 1.5. Anyway, and so I'm monitoring the thrust, and the specific impulse also goes down by thrust, and it's only 130 seconds specific impulse, you note there. Way more than it should be knocked down by a 1.5 atmosphere. Anyway, when we stage, we are nowhere near where I expected to be with these stages, and the whole thing with two stages has more than 7,000 meters per second, which is plenty to get into orbit around Titan. Uh, but it's not here, we're having some problems, and in fact this can't even orient properly because it's so low in the atmosphere still, because the first stage didn't get us in the, anywhere. So I looked at the atmospheric curve and I, I agreed with my chat in the during the live stream that really we would have put a short, shorter nozzle on this RD uh, 
0210. So to simulate that, we change the one atmosphere number to 280, which seems reasonable. Uh, but I also put an additional key for 1.5 atmospheres, and we set that to what it was set before, 164. So that's very reasonable, I feel, by any stretch of the imagination. So um, we'll be starting, in theory, at 164 seconds of ISP. And in fact, uh, we do over there, you can see. And we get 280 kilonewtons of thrust at the start now. So that's a much better start. We should get much further, right? 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 Well, not as far as I was expecting, because you can see we're not accelerating very much right now. It's like maybe 0.1 meter per second per second. And that means we're encountering a tremendous amount of drag, much more than we ought to. And it's basically crawling there. And we get to 20 kilometers altitude, and that, this still can't control itself when it's in that thick of an atmosphere. We, we sort of write it, but it's not going to do the job. Now, orbital velocity around Titan is actually very low once you get up to 600 kilometers, which is outside of the atmosphere, so uh, the horizontal part is actually not too bad. Most of the stuff is just vertical, but we're just not going vertical very quickly. So I wonder what the problem is. I try to destroy the parachutes and anything else that we can get rid of that might be causing an obscene amount of drag. You know, maybe the parachutes are pretending to be deployed. That was the first thought. Maybe the parachutes are pretending to still be deployed. And we've got 7,008, uh, sorry, 7,400 meters per second, but we are still getting a ton of drag. Lots and lots of drag. So I'm curious about this situation. I tried to reduce the drag on the lander cam, which is the biggest part that would be experiencing drag, just by doing this, but this really doesn't matter with FAR, I don't think. FAR has its own rules, and of course we display aero data. I think somebody in chat probably mentioned that. So we're gonna get the numbers. So here we go again. Up. Interesting music here. But if we take a look at the aero data, the drag force uh, on the lunar cabin, which you see to the left there, is more than 140 kilonewtons. But then the drag force on the procedural tank is less. And note the docking system, which is right on top, which we're getting a lot of drag because of its flatness and the fact that it's on top, is only getting 15 kilonewtons when the lunar cabin is getting 10 times that. So there's some issue with the lunar cabin. But when I bring up far, maybe you can see behind that, uh, you can see the atmospheric density is at 2. We're at 22,000 meters. The atmospheric density shouldn't be at 2 because the surface atmospheric density is supposed to be 1.45 atmospheres. And here at the surface, we have 5.485 atmospheres in FAR. And I checked the configuration in real solar system, and that's right. That, that number is right. It is 1.45. Here, for some reason, FAR is reading a huge atmospheric density. So I decided to activate infinite propellant. So we are cheating, but the game is not being honest with me here. Uh, this is not right. We are getting much more drag here than we're supposed to. And, you know, I had done the math on this lander before we started out, and I knew where exactly we were supposed to get with the first stage. So what we're going to do is I've got infinite propellant active, and we'll just dump the first stage. Uh, you can see we're accelerating horribly, but as long as we're still going up, it's fine. Basically, we've reached terminal velocity in this thicker atmosphere, but I decided that we would just dump the first stage where I expected to be where the first stage would end. So that's the idea. So here you can see we're, we're at, this, at this height, 30 kilometers above the surface, we are finally at the right atmospheric density. That's just ridiculous. But, I mean, again, that's as far as far as concerned. I don't think it's what... RSS intended, and then there's the whole matter of the in-game menu being wrong about the atmospheric density, right? It said 0.6 for some reason, so nobody seems to agree. Anyway, that is where I expect it to be with the first stage at the end of the first stage, and so basically about 60 kilometers in real altitude, and here we're having trouble controlling this thing, still, because it's still a very, very soupy atmosphere more than expected. 
And these are vacuum engines that we have on here and vacuum RCS. So it's not great. The engines, if I recall, do gimbal a little bit. So when we activate them, we can use them to orient, but of course that's wasting fuel. But we did have some surplus to work with here, thankfully. So... We get this under control. Barely. Now the engines are producing enough thrust to overcome the drag. We still got the lunar cabin up there and you can see the drag is uh, hovering in single digits to about 10 sometimes, but depending on our angle. But uh, we're producing 144 kilonewtons with these four engines, but we're pointing down right now, so that's not good. Yeah. The amount of thrust that they can deflect is having trouble against the drag. And we do turn off infinite propellant now that I've oriented and pointed at prograde. So, so again, it only has the orientation problems because the atmosphere is much thicker than we were expecting. But this is where we expect it to be with this pod. So um, I think it ought to be the case that the atmosphere is thin enough that this could control itself. But anyway, we had to shut down the engines and coast and start up again and do this whole business, trying to conserve fuel as best as we could. Yeah, you can actually sort of see where we were at. The flag icon was down at the surface there. We've basically gone straight up, more or less. And I decided that that's the best way to go. We've still got a lot of atmosphere left, right? We have to get to 600 kilometers altitude, so... I went up steeper, and then we started to turn a little bit, and that was a better idea. So finally I got an apoapsis that was above the atmosphere with some allowance for drag, uh, so about 722 kilometers, but look at how the apoapsis is going down right there. Uh, the drag is still affecting us tremendously here at nearly 300 kilometers altitude, but anyway, we eventually get out of it. That took a long time time warping, by the way. This is like, it's like Venus with this sort of thing. Anyway, we manage just barely to make orbit. Look at how much delta V we have left. We, remember, we started out with 7,400. And what we have left after making an orbit above 600 kilometers is 354. And then we have to rendezvous with our mothership, as it were. And so that's what we do. These plucky little hypergolic engines making the rendezvous burns. And then we're approaching the Saturn Amphibious Assault Ship, as I call it, with all the landers. And it finally docks on the end where it belongs, now no longer with the descent stage. And come on. Alright. So, Arthur and Katak are safe after some shenanigans. Uh, we did properly turn off infinite propellant for the second stage and everything, so no more cheating is currently in progress. And here we are transferring the crew to the return pod, the Orion capsule, with lots of delta V. You can see we have 2,000 there because we used the, the third stage of Saturn V, well, you know, with the modified engine, in order to do a lot of the work. And so here they are coming home, leaving Bearfell all alone on Mir, as he wanted. So, uh, these few, uh, really Aprop is the only one who's a tourist Kerbal, the other two are generic Kerbals. Or hired Kerbals, I guess? They're tourist Kerbals and hired Kerbals. Anyway, Aprop is a viewer. So, off goes the service module. And here it comes down through the atmosphere. Always oh, interesting to see how the atmospheric effects get applied. The aero cap seems to be getting special attention, doesn't it? And we didn't have the scent mode on, so they got lots of G-forces. But nobody passed out or anything. And off goes the aero cap. And here they are coming down. But just in case you thought that the game had no more surprises for me, well, I kept it on Fizz Warp and they were coming down over ground, over grasslands, so we got a little bit of a tumble and a heat shield explosion. 
So as this sorts itself out and I wait to be able to recover them, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.